Hi everyone and welcome back to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid, and today we will talk about Coda. Yes, Coda. Maybe you heard of it, maybe you haven't, but Coda I'm actually following for a very long time. Since I started using Notion, I was continuously going back and forth between Coda and Notion, actually looking if Coda could be a thing for me. And just with the recent funding they received, they just stepped up their game. They released a complete new version of Coda and I went back and it's pretty exciting what we see there. And I think without further ado, let's dive into this. So I will always compare today Coda versus Notion because I think this is the best way to describe Coda. It is a real Notion competitor. So just to make clear, I'm not using Coda as my daily tool yet, but I'm thinking about if it might be worth. And we will discover this together now. And I'm more than happy to learn more about your opinion in the comments below. Did you test your Coda already? Do you compare Coda with Notion? What are your thoughts on this? Go to the comments. But here is what I think about Coda. So this is what you are presented when you log in more or less for the first time. I created already a few docs. So docs are essentially like your workspaces in Notion, I would say. In Coda, we have a, some deeper structure. So when we go to Notion, for example, we have these workspaces that we can switch. And in these workspaces, we have all these pages. That's it. So you have a page and then you can have sub pages and sub sub pages and so on. So you have a hierarchical uh, structure there and it's pretty straightforward. In Coda, you have folders that you create. So we can just create a new folder. And in this folder, we have docs. And in this doc, we will have pages. So it seems there's another layer on top of which, what we just saw. We have a search function, we can go full screen, and this is the same as we know it from Notion, we have full screen. So you can see actually each doc as an own workspace like it is in Notion. So now we are working in one workspace or one doc. And this is pretty interesting approach because now I can work in either one project or in one team. So let's create a new doc to start from scratch to see what we can do. So obviously we have templates again. We even have a notion template. So what does this mean? Let's see what happens. Yes, the grass is greener. <laughs> I like that. And I was already wondering how could I move notion to another tool like code or anything because they don't support proper API connection. So I can get these things out. So it seems I only have to export. So what I will do, I will actually export something like my software database. Okay. So it seems I have to export the page and the sub pages. There's only one page. So we switch to HTML include sub pages, export. Yeah, of course I have to take sub pages because I have pages here inside the table where I have more information stored. And this is the reason why we need to also export the sub pages. And here's the export file, open it up, preparing your doc. This should only take a minute, time to sip. There we are. So let's see. Okay, it seems it took an icon, which is similar to the one I had for my software here. I have the name, I have the purpose. So it took over the selection, but then that's it. Everything else is missing. Do you know why? Because in Notion, those are related databases. So this is just a roll up of my database, but I'm pretty impressed how good it actually Got it in there. You see all the drop downs, everything was taken over, even the website and all this. And in Coda, we don't have the same way as we have it in Notion. So what I mean by that, we have a table here and it doesn't open up as a page. So we can't write anything there. We can't add anything. We only can comment and then we can go through different data sets. Ah, and look what I just saw. As soon as I added anything here, see, I used, I added a page, how to use Todoist. So we have a sub page in Todoist and we have this. It actually took this as well. See, here are the sub pages and I can click here and even took 
contact information there and also the connection to the different websites. So this worked very well as well. Now we already see how Coda works in comparison with Notion. We have an inline table and we can write below this. We have something on the page. We can click here and it will actually make another layer of this page. So it is a sub page of this page. See, I can go back to software. Yeah, I'm not sure about if I think this is a the best way to do it. See, we have here the software database, but there's nothing below. So this is much more clearer to me that this is now the database and I can open up this as a page and I can keep writing below this. So this is already a difference. Here we have actually proper sub pages below the software, which makes a difference. So what I want to say that with this, we have here, for example, 48 softwares. So if I would add to every page some information, it would just list it up here as well. But what about if I want to actually add a new page there and then I will drag it here. See, it is just another page which is not inside the table here, but only a, a, but in the list of, of those pages. So I think this can become very confusing. I would keep this as a simple database and don't change anything and all the pages coming up below would then only be content of this database, if this makes any sense. So let's just go back to our doc. Okay, so it created the doc software. And now let's create, see, and that's what I like in Coda actually, it picks already an icon that fits what I have written there. So let me just, See, when I take space, I <laughs> get the space shuttle and other recommendations related to this. So it is a tiny thing, but this is I really like, something I really like to see. When I start writing, you see I have blocks here. I can make the command thing. This is something you're um, used to from Notion. Let's pick this one, template, simple meeting notes. Now I have, a, they added a table. Yeah, so I can do this obviously in Notion as well with my with the templates. And what we have here, we also have blocks. Okay, so this means when I grab this, I can move it around as you are used to in Notion as well. So very Notion similar. I saw another template here, like the voting table. And here we have a vote column. So I can just click here and I would vote. So if you're working in collaboration, you can create this voting table and then you can ask the questions and people can actually vote for this. I also saw tasks let's see what this is okay that's a simple task table that we can build in notion as well so there's no big difference we have the task name and i think here we have the same problem as we have in notion that we need to build up a project database and a task database and then connect these with each other and this is actually the reason why i'm using clickup and to do is for task management i don't think coda will be a solution as an all-in-one solution i wouldn't work in here for my tasks but at least we have something like this as well so obviously we have checklists talking about tasks so nothing special there so why should I use Coda instead of Notion? Most of what I have seen so far is available in Notion as well. So there's no reason now to switch. But we need to dig a bit deeper, I think. Let's click Explore. And here we have Packs and Import. And there we have a lot of things that we can do. For example, connecting to Sapia. If you don't know, Sapia is an automation tool that allows you to connect different applications with each other. And this is also the reason why people are eagerly waiting to the, for the Notion API in order to connect it with other tools. It makes it much easier. There are some workaround solutions for Notion. So if you don't want to miss out on these, uh, I will cover this on my YouTube channel as well. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. But now let's have a look what Coda actually offers to integrate. So you usually can go to Sapia and search for the tool that you want to integrate with other tools. We could now say you want to integrate this with, for example, Todoist. And now I see exactly what I could do. So I can select a trigger. So for example, I have a new row in Coda and this would trigger, you know, create a task in Todoist. That's it. And here we see what we can actually do. There's not something like if you assign somebody specific to some task or anything like this, it should trigger something else. 
So this is very limited. Whenever you add a label to your Gmail, it would save it in Coda as a new row. This is something you can do. But to me, this is very limiting. What is YouTube? Okay, it also provides you then columns that I could you add to other. And here you see, I just add the YouTube link and it will take the title and replace the link. That's something I like. And it will pull the video and some notes. Let's see how this works. Add this YouTube thing and let's see if it works. Yeah, see it takes the title. It adds the thumbnail. That's interesting. Let's see what else we got here. So you can integrate Shopify. So we can pull our information into Coda. So I can use intercom with Coda, tight integrations with other tools. I think that's very important to have. Okay, so as soon as you install this, you always get different options. So you see when I bring in the template for Wikipedia, it will make a table. See, it brings all in the, all the information. And the good thing is I just make a new row and I say, bam, and we will pull the picture from Wikipedia, the summary and the body. And all I have to do is I can click here. I have this information, I click here and can go to there. So that's really interesting as well. So what about Google Calendar? Okay, so I can pull in my events from my Google Calendar as well. And now I have the events coming here up. What I can do, I can do a quick add button. Okay, that's interesting as well. So we have a Google Calendar integration here as well. So we can add sub pages like in Notion and we have a sub sub page. The reason why I'm using Notion is really the power of the databases and now with the backlinks. So let's see how good Coda is when it comes to database connection. Let's build up a database. Okay, so and now we can press the plus button and we make a table. So we can now pull the software table that we have already there or we make a new table, that's what we will do. So it seems in Encoder, we always have inline databases. In Notion, as you can see here on this one, we have pages that are only databases. See, I can't write below this. And I think that's really great because this is a complete database to me. It's a software database. It's no longer a page, it's a database. So then we have, let's say, uh, software, coder, notion, Chrome. And in database A, we say hardware, MacBook, iPad, Windows, laptop. And then I go to a new page and here I will mention something. Okay, and it comes up, see, database A, iPad. And that's something I can do in Notion as well. And now we have mentioned these two things from our databases. That's something I like, I click here. Ah, and okay, and it just pulls up the information of this data in the database. And that's really interesting approach because in, and I start typing like Notion, database hardware, okay, bam. So when I click here, it actually opens up this page. And now I have to go back in order to go to the page where I was writing on. And here again, uh, press and hold command and then click here and it will open up a new tab with the new page. But yeah, I, I really like the approach that when I'm reading something like this, I click on there, I just get the information of this data set I have here. It's really interesting. The other thing is when I go to Notion, I have now backlinks and I click here and now you see it is backlinked to my example. When I click here, it shows me the line where this was mentioned. And it seems backlinks is not a thing for Coda yet. So when I click here, I go to the database and there's no indicator that this was mentioned somewhere else. That's really something I really like uh, in Rome Research and Notion. And for this reason, I think Notion is really covering the best of both worlds now. With the backlinks, they're much more related to Rome research, but have the option that you can add much more rich content and build up beautiful looking pages compared to Rome research. But on the other hand, you can connect databases as I can do it here in Coda with the advantage having the backlinks. So that's really interesting. So when I do these databases, I also try sometimes doing something else. So let's make another table, A plus B, and I want to combine these now. 
So what I will do is I mention Notion. Okay, this works. And I mention iPad. This works as well. And now I can click on this and I get the information from database B. So let's see how Rollup or Lookup works. So here I can choose my database. And now I simply have to look up like this. So we know how this works. I can choose more than one. So in Notion, I go, went to my demo Notion account and here we have database A. I replicated what we have the same in Coda. And now let's bring this together as I showed you here. I was just mentioning these two and I added lookup column. So let's do this as well. Add Notion, okay, database B, iPad, okay, it's there. So this works as well. And now I can click on this and it will go to this page. I can go back or we can open it up like this and then go to the page. So you see, I have a page now below this relation and I can give more information, which is then related to the mention of Notion in the A plus B database. But when I go to Notion, I have different information. However, you see now here that I have a backlink and I see this is mentioned in my Notion database. And I click here and I jump to the page in the Notion database is there and I think this is really great something have something like this then we also can go to relation and pick the database and let's see we have iPad and MacBook see we can all also select several things then we have formulas I think this would go into much detail and for notion we also have formulas which is a big thing in notion to use so I really running out of reasons why I should really switch to Coda. So now let's have a look at the payment plan. I know a few years ago it was for free all the time. Now they released an official version of Coda and you need to pay for it. I mean, can stay free, free for the whole team, create docs with size minute limits, free packs and so on. As soon you want to create more docs, you have to pay for this. And to be honest, I'm not sure about this doc structure and this folder structure and so on. It seems a bit confusing and to me Notion is a lot more straightforward when it comes to this, I think. And it also becomes pretty expensive. So i also thinking about if it is worth price-wise to switch to Coda. I don't think yet. You have to start paying in order to get these packs in order to cross stock tables so you can actually synchronize tables between different docs, which is essentially workspaces in Notion. Again, also with the 30 days version history. And for private folders, it starts with $36 per month per doc maker. So just in order to get private folders. I think Notion is much cheaper when it comes to this. I can do everything here already private, only for myself. So looking at Coda and Notion, it's really interesting how similar Coda is to Notion. If I missed anything and you know more about Coda, please go into the comments below and let us know. I'm eager to learn more about Coda. I know that they are now really ha pushing hard to bring up new features and so on. Really looking forward to see how Coda evolves. For now, I will stay in Notion for the reasons that I mentioned during the video, which is having the backlinks when I mention any thing but also the advantage of connecting databases it seems they really have the best of what i need when it comes to knowledge management if you want to learn more about knowledge management and how to build up your productivity system end to end i recommend to you to go to my website and look for the inner circle membership there you will learn about the icore framework which stands for input control output refine and those are the different parts of your productivity system you will learn what tools work best with each other and how you can boost your efficiency in your system in no time if you don't want to miss any updates from coda and notion and other productivity tools make sure you subscribe to this channel and i'll catch you up next time